Hello, so today's video is very out of the ordinary, so just solving a problem, we decided to show you, like, well, it's still a problem, but it's a problem of a more personal basis. I developed a sort of theory to uh, generalize uh, an idea, so uh, before I showcase you all of this holy yap, uh, I should uh, probably motivate it. Uh, why did they make a bunch of clunky useless terms, right? Well, they're useless anyhow, even with this motivation, but they're just a little bit less useless. So, let's review an injective uh, sequence Pn, uh, and uh, let's say it's defined in metric space uh, x. Let's say that uh, the range of the sequence is e. Now, it is known that uh, if a range of a sequence has uh, two limit points, then it does not converge. If a range of a limit of a uh, sequence has uh, zero limit points, then it does not converge. And if range of a sequence uh, is unbounded, then it does not converge. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna review the case where it is bounded and has exactly one limit point. And well, we don't know if it converges, right? And it entirely depends on the metric space that we're working with. So, uh... What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna uh, find, a, a, I guess you could say, a family of metric spaces where uh, it, that uh, there is exactly one limit point and that is bounded absolutely implies that the limit does converge. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, let's draw this line. And what, would, what it would mean is we put uh, the limit point in the center and uh, before the point is on this line, uh, the greater is the value of uh, DLP. Again, this could be any metric space. This uh, is not R1, this is just a representation. Now we're going to review two cases. The first case is uh, no matter uh, how far from L we segregate it against the outer world, like let's call this some distance R, right? And uh, if this is always going to be finite, uh, then it is obvious that L is the only limit point and, uh, well, it's gonna be uh, the one that limit converges to because this is amount, this is a finite amount of elements, we can just cut off part of the sequence that includes them. Uh, so, in other case, no matter what we pick, uh, there's always an infinite amount of elements outside. Yeah? Now, mind you, we're working with the, a bounded sequence, uh, so there's gonna be some bounds here and here. Say that uh, this entire distance is m. Say that this tiny distance is uh, f. Now what we're gonna do is one of these segments is gonna have an infinite amount of elements, and the other is gonna have a finite. That's why their union is gonna have an infinite amount of elements. Or well, they could both be infinite. We don't really know. We know that one of them is infinite for sure. That's what we do know. So let's take one of those that is infinite, be it this one or this one, and let's say that it's defined as a comma b. Now what we can do is, we're gonna pick the central element, a plus b over 2, in the good uh, two intervals, uh, from a to c, and uh, from c to a, yeah? and from c to b, and one of them is again gonna be infinite, the other is gonna be either finite or infinite. Uh, so we continue running down the scope, and uh, essentially uh, we get uh, some interval that's gonna converge to a single order point, never will as we continue so uh at the point that it converts to is let's call it d and uh we have uh, segments like this one that are infinite uh now that we have this here again this is not very rigorous statement i could show that this is true but uh, i have really limited runtime i want this video to be like an hour uh so now that we have this uh d is essentially a limit point and uh, the reason behind this is the fact that we're working is an injective sequence and we have an infinite amount of elements here so uh, it is evident that uh, D is a limit point so we have some D and uh, we continuously shorten this and D is obviously a limit point, so again, we begin assuming that L is the, sing the one and only limit point, however, we find another one, so obviously by contradiction, there can be a 
infinite amount of elements outside of uh, this uh, distance f. Therefore, if L is a uh, well, uh, uh, therefore, if L is the only uh, limit point, then it does converge. However, there is a major lapse in judgment here, which is uh, the reason I developed this whole entire thing. Uh, essentially, D is not a specific point, it's a distance. And well, when we're working with R1, or really any RK, uh, well, no, let's begin with R1. When working with R1, such a distance is gonna be uh, having a finite amount of elements. So let's take a number line, let's call it zero here. The, let's take a num uh, the numbers with distance three from it. it could be three and minus three, only two elements like that. So uh, one of them is gonna be a limit point. However, there's an infinite amount of elements with a distance as specified. Let's take a circle, for example, right? What we could do is we can continuously move alongside this circle. And it's not a problem we can like jump around and uh, do crazy tricks here. <laughs> so that's a problem. How do we uh, ignore that fact? Uh, well, for one, a uh, circle has a, a silly property would, which would make it not being able to, like, you will not be able to just jump around like that. Uh, but it's a general, generally, in the general case, it's not uh, necessary that it would converge like that, because we're working with an infinite amount of points, so for all you know, it could be uh, jumping from one point to another for every single uh, one of the new distances, so it's not an actual limit point here, somewhere. Uh, so, the way I approach this problem, uh, first, we have a metric space X is said to be the extension of metric space Y, yeah? if Y is a subset of uh, X and distances for identical pairs of points are equal. Uh, this is an obvious thing that you need to specify. Uh, let's take R1, for example. We can extend it to R2 by just including uh, uh, these two sections here. And well, the distances between this point and this point is going to be the same in both R1 and R2. Uh, it's just a useful concept, right? Uh, the second definition, metric space X is said to be radial if for every number R and for every point P and X there exists another point Q, which is that uh, distance between P and Q is uh, R. Essentially, if we were to look into a specific example, R2 for example, this essentially states that uh, for every point P, uh, you can uh, draw a circle with any radius and it will have points on it, like Q for example here. Uh, so that's specific case of R2, an example of uh, the second uh, definition of what is a radial metric space and why it's relevant. Uh, next, third is radial hood of point P with radius R and metric space X is set of all points in X such that for every point Q set set the distance between P and Q is equal to R. Such so radial hood would be denoted as uh, R R P. So uh, it's more notation as a neighborhood, mostly because it's almost like a neighborhood. Just instead of uh, the less sign, we have an equal sign. I don't believe this needs an explanation. For in R two, that will be just a circumference. Uh, one four radial space X is said to be primitive if every radial hood in it contains a finite amount of points. Now that is what we were looking into here. R one is a, a, a primitive radial space because it has a finite amount of points like that, which is one and two. Uh, it's not variable, but if it was variable, it wouldn't find it would not be a problem as long as it was finite. Now working at the section two. Oh god, I made a mistake here. Uh, yeah, I should probably fix that later. <laughs> but you get the point anyway, so this is not relevant, the enumeration. Uh, the order of a primitive radial space is 1. So, now I'm introducing the concept of an order. It will be obvious from uh, the third part why I introduced this concept, but for now, the order of a primitive radial space is 1, which is nice because R1 is, well, 1. Next, we have the order of radial metric space X extended from radial metric space Y in the order of metric space Y plus 1. Uh, well, so the order of R2 extended from R1 is going to be 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2. And we can continue like that, so order of RK is uh, K. Now, what is an order, and why does it matter? The third statement. 
a radial space X is said to be reducible with the order K if for every R greater than 0, for every point P in X, for every uh, S between 0 and 2R, and for every Q that belongs to the radial hood with the radius R and center P, the intersection of that radial hood with radial hood with center uh, Q and uh, radius S is a non-empty subset of a radial hood in radial space Y with order K minus 1 such that X is extension of Y. Now this is an inc incredibly clunky statement, but it's actually simpler than it seems. So uh, let's review R3 for now. So uh, we're gonna have two spheres. Uh, no, okay, let's begin with a sphere. We have a cool sphere. I love spheres, who doesn't? Right, and uh, the thing about the sphere is, uh, let's take some point on it. Uh, there's some center of it called P, but we don't really care about much. Let's take some point on the surface of the sphere specifically, because we're working with a radial hood, not a neighborhood. And uh, let's call it N, or with the redder. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, another sphere, one such the radius of it is uh, going to be uh, less than uh, the diameter of the other sphere, and the center is n. The reason we do that is uh, so that the surfaces intersect to begin with, so they have a proper intersection, and it's not zero, so the intersection isn't a single point. So let's do that. And uh, we have uh, two spheres intersecting. Now the intersection of two spheres is gonna be a circle. And well, a circle is gonna be R2, uh, part of R2, it's a subset of R2. And what we're gonna do next is, now that we have a circle, we're gonna do a similar thing, we're gonna pick some N, gonna pick a smaller circle, or the other smaller, smaller than the, the radius smaller than the diameter of the other one. And again, we uh, get this, and guess what? Uh, we're getting uh, two points that are a subset of a primitive uh, real space, so we get only two points here, which is a finite amount, which allows us to conclude that one of them is a limit point. Okay, now to explain this part, uh, the theorem. An objective sequence defined on reducible radial space converges if and only if the range of the sequence is bounded and has a single limit point. So essentially what we have just done is we generalize this case. Again, uh, let's review uh, the circle part here because this one is fairly easily explained. Now the circle part is important. Uh, let's say this is N. Uh, this is uh, P. Now what we're going to do with n is uh, we're increasing it, uh, the radius of it, up until we hit a point where uh, suddenly the amount of uh, the amount of uh, points uh, lying within this neighborhood specifically, not the radial hood, the neighborhood, mind you, uh, is infinite. So let's say that uh, we have a function uh, tq and uh, Essentially, what it does is it returns all the points uh, in this neighborhood with a radius q. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to define a set S, which is a set of all q's for which tq is uh, infinite. What we're going to do is we're going to take the infimum of S, we're going to take that as uh, the radius of a radial hood with n as the center. And here are the intersections. Uh, now, if infimum is zero, then n is a limit point. If infimum is not a zero, then uh, we have two uh, points here, since uh, we're working with R2, which has order two. And if since order is two, uh, then the uh, order of you reduce this radial uh, matrix space is going to be one, so it's going to be a primitive one. So uh, this radial hood that we acquire, and we have uh, only uh, two points here and here. Uh, so one of them is going to be a limit point, otherwise uh, we wouldn't suddenly get a spike of amount of elements after we hit this. 
So uh, here and here, as we start to decrease the circles together, is going to be an infinite amount of elements. So uh, either one is going to going to be uh, a limit point. It could be both. It could be one of them. But at least one is going to be a limit point. Uh, not very rigorous explanation of this theory, but I just really wanted to showcase it without uh, making the video like seven hours long. <laughs> I hope you liked it. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.